first, sorry for my English, I will try to tell you something. But my English is not good. So, uh, uh, in this story, I will try to brief you, tell you about the situation with old computers in Ukraine and about several interesting computers manufactured in the Soviet Union, which I have in my collection. So many years ago in the Soviet Union, computers were informally divided into home, educational and professional computers. Home computers were console-type computers, mostly that expect from clones. But there were, were also many different models present uh, that were not compatible with each other. Many home <coughs> computers were based on the Radio 86K or specialist circuits. Uh, those circuits were the most successful and simple. They were published at one time in the popular magazines Radio Amateur and Modelist Constructor. That is why many radio amateurs and factory cooperatives decided to repeat uh, these uh, circuits in different, in different versions, sometimes adding new extensions. Home computers such as PC01 View in the photo or Vector uh, 06C next computer, uh, stand out from uh, all others. Uh, Vector uh, 06C had uh, one of the richest graphics uh, capabilities of home Soviet computers. Another home uh, computer POISC, a very simple and cheap clone of IBM PC, was very popular too, especially in Ukraine. And the Bulgarian Revets 8D was a clone of the Oric Atmos computer, uh, also had some popularity among Ukraine home computers. Educational computers were used in school and universities. Many of them uh, were built on the PDP-11 architecture, uh, such as Electronica MS-0511 uh, or BK-0010. But also uh, educational computers uh, were based on uh, other architectures, uh, such as Corvette computers, uh, based on the 8080 processor or the Agat computer. Almost the able to clone. Somewhere <coughs> in the educational process were used Bulgarian Revets 8C computers. Uh, full able, va clone, able to clones. And some popularity had Japanese uh, Yamaha computers of MSX standard. Were which specially adopted for the Soviet Union. Uh, professional computers were used in, in uh, companies for work. Uh, there are various uh, ABM PC clones. Uh, Neuron E966, X, Iskra 1030, ES1840-1841, Bulgarian Private 16, and other professional computers were the clones of the B11 architecture, <coughs> such as DBK3, Electronica 85, a clone of DEC Professional Pro 340 and 50 computer, and Electronica 60, a clone of LSE 11 computer. Many computers uh, which based on the 8080 processor had a CPU from Positron factory, later uh, named to Rodon. That factory was uh, in my home city, Ivano-Frankivsk. The plant also produced the 8086 processor, many other microchips and different military electronics. About 10,000 people worked there, but at the moment the factory no longer exists. Professional computers are the rarest for several, uh, several reasons. Uh, at first, they were not available for free sale to all people. All those computers were produced for the factories and, uh, and enterprises. Secondary, they were very expensive because they contained many expensive metals. Most expensive uh, parts in Soviet computers uh, are the gold slots and green capacitor called KM. The green capacitors everywhere there. Uh, they have a palladium inside and cost uh, more than uh, 1000 euros per 1 kilogram. Of course, the average computer doesn't have a kilogram of spell capacitors, but sometimes there are still a lot of them. 
That is why a standard Soviet computer can cost approximately from 3, 3 to 500 euros per one computer. During the difficult uh, for the econ uh, economics 19 years, a lot of computers and other equipment were destroyed because they contained a lot of expensive metals. Yes, you can find old computers from Soviet Union even now, but less and less. Sometimes when I met uh, some storage with old equipment, it was like opening the tomb of Tutankhamun. Because inside there were many expensive things that were not been, been stolen by the robots in the past years. And their value were approximately the same as the Egyptian treasures. Computers for studying were got the same destiny like professional computers. But many more of them were produced, so were much more uh, survived. Some clever people were removing expensive capacitors from the computer and putting cheap ones instead. The first available for all people were two personal computers. Uh, the first is BK0010, was developed in uh, 1983 and was begun to produce in 1985. It has a 16-bit processor, frequency 3 MHz, which is based on the PDP-11 architecture. RAM size is uh, 32 KB. Image output was only in two graphic modes. One is black and white mode and another is color mode. Four colors, 256 by 256 pixels. The first version of this computer had a sensor keyboard and built-in programming language for color. First version. <laughs> the second early personal computer in the USSR was a, a GAT. Not a complete clone of Apple II computer. Its development was also completed in 1983 and productions were begun in 1984. But mainly, again, agats were supplied to classrooms for educational process. Agat was based on the MOS uh, 6502 processor with the frequency of 1 MHz, but the <coughs> processor itself was made it in India. In India, in the USSR, a 60 502 processors were being cloned a little later and their production uh, were very small, mostly only test samples. The most common, uh, common computer model uh, was called AGAT-7, but, but don't worry, there were not many models of them. Uh, the first trial series was already called AGAT-4 and then it was improved to the next uh, factory series, AGAT-7, and the last one uh, modification was AGAT-9. Agats have uh, 96 or 128 kilobytes of RAM. Different uh, screen resolution uh, models are present for image output. Mainly, uh, these different graphic models and their construction methods are different and different memory addressing were the reason that Agat couldn't run programs for Able to. But later, for Agat, a board popularly known as Cell uh, 121 was created. This board added to a GAT compatibility with Apple II. When you insert this board into computer, it doesn't manifest itself in any way. To work with it, you need to switch the monitor cable to this board and boot from a special startup disk. Next, in the 1986 year, the popular magazine Radio was published a circuit of the simple computer which could be assembled by all interested people. The, uh, the, this scheme was named Radio 86RK from the year of manufacture. Mm -hmm. The computer was very simple and uh, it contained only 29 microchips. Previously, Radio Magazine has, had already published uh, schematic uh, for homemade computers, but they were very complicated to create. But Radio 86RK became very popular because the circuit was very little and simple. It was created by, uh, by many people and in various modifications were sta uh, started to produce by different factories. Often the computer uh, had, a co had incompatible uh, software with each other, so programs required reprogramming. One of such computers ba uh, based on the RK86 circuit, for example, is the computer Alpha BK. Uh, manufactured by the Etalon plant in Ismail town in Ukraine. The 
the computer is assembled in a heavy metal case. Radio 86RK originally had 16 uh, kilobytes of RAM, but you could solder another row of, row of memory chips on the top and uh, get uh, 32 kilobytes of RAM. The processor inside uh, is uh, 8080, Intel 8080, with a frequency of 2 MHz. ROM size is 2 kilobytes with a control program called Monitor. Program, programs were loaded from a tape recorder. Image output was only text in black and white mode. When the programs were loaded, nothing was displayed on the screen. This is because the computer circuit was very simple. In parallel with this, in 1985-1986, Anatoly Goku from the Ukrainian city Kamensky, at the time in Prodzhensk, developed the scheme of another simple computer called Specialist. But this circuit was published in free access a little later than Radio 86RK. It was in 1987 at another magazine Modelist Constructor. The author of the scheme in Italy uh, wanted to create a computer class for his college where he worked. But all this res uh, resulted to a popular computer. The computer circuit contained approximately 38 microchips. The computer was based on the Intel uh, 8080 processor with a frequency of 2 MHz. The RAM size uh, was uh, 48 kilobytes. Uh, graphics mode is uh, in Italy graphics, but monochrome. Uh, one such computer in my collection is a Pioneer computer. The ROM in this computer can be easily expanded from the standard 2 kilobytes to 10 kilobytes. That uh, is adding new possibilities to work and you will be able to run more programs. Also, here is present color video mode for 5 colors and you can expand it to 8 colors with adding only one chip to video memory. The computer is made quite well, uh, but with age the rubber uh, of the buttons became harder and harder, so now the buttons are very difficult to press. The next computer is very, uh, very special and interesting. It is called Argo uh, FV65 and 11. This computer was uh, developed at KPI, Kyiv Polytechnics uh, Institute. It was based on their previous development, another uh, computer, Junior FV65 uh, and uh, 06, based on the RK86 system. Uh, the Argo computer was produced uh, at the Kyiv Industrial Association Electroparallel uh, from uh, 1991 to 1993, <coughs> two years. During this time, a few, a very few of those computers were produced, maybe a few thousand pieces. I think approximately 3,000 copies. So what is special in this computer? It is built on a Z80 processor, has 128 kilobytes of RAM. Operation system of that computer is a modified version of a CPM, but also this, the system has included program that can switch the computer for operation into original ZX Spectrum mode. At the same time, the computer's RAM is divided into two sections of uh, 64 kilobytes each. Then later you will be able to exit from the TX Spectrum mode and go back to CPM. The reset button on the computer case is not hardware button and reset only the TX Spectrum system. The next feature of this computer is that uh, the CPM operation system can be loaded from, the, from a standard audio cassette. But if you use the Mayak tape recorder which, uh, with this computer, which by the way were also produced in Kyiv, then the computer itself could uh, control this tape recorder. The CPM operation system was uh, formatting the cassette as a diskette and uh, divided it uh, into sectors. Information could be saved in any sectors, not necess uh, necessary sequentially, as on cassettes in uh, other home computers. So you have a file system on the cassette, through which the operation system can search the necessary data by itself. And it all works <coughs> completely automatically. Unfortunately, no programs were re uh, released for the native operation system, except uh, for the system once, because the developers uh, did not open the architecture of this computer and did not, uh, did not even share the circuit. 
When those computers were begun to be sold in 1991, such developments still had the chance for life, but very quickly, le quickly less than two years, everyone uh, understood uh, that the architecture of IBM PC finally win. So the Argo computer was not common and was forgotten. Next, uh, let's uh, go to IBM PC, and I want to show you the Neuron E966 computer. This is the earliest uh, clone of IBM PC in the USSR. It was developed at the Kiev City Tour. Computer productions were started in the mid-1980s. Uh, the computer is made uh, is the from, uh, from two blocks. There are processor unit and a storage, storage unit, as you can see. The development uh, of the computer is so early uh, that is, uh, its basket was made not by soldering, but with uh, winning the wires onto the bus contacts. Yes, no soldering. Bus contacts. The internal bus is a modified uh, multi-bus, uh, not ISA. In another, in software way, the computer is a complete clone of IBM PC. The original software was represented by the Neuron DOS 1 and Neuron DOS 2 systems. The first uh, is a PC DOS clone and the second is a CPM 86 clone. The next computer was produced in Belarus. This is the ES18 uh, and, uh, and 42 computer. In some way, uh, the maximum evolution of the IBM PC architecture in the Soviet Union. This computer is quite uh, rare, uh, not so many of them were produced. <coughs> there is information that approximately uh, 10,000 pieces, and even uh, fewer of them have survived to this day. Maybe that is because it, uh, we, if we believe to the native documents of what I have from my computer, it contains uh, 12 grams of gold. The computer contains as, uh, an ISA bus, but only one of the few uh, slots is physically compatible with ISA. The computer is actually a bit more powerful than uh, the XT, because it's based on the 88, uh, 80, 86 processor, and the processor frequency is uh, 10 MHz. But uh, the interesting thing uh, here is that the computer can execute programs what have been written for uh, two 86 processors, but only for uh, real-time programs. This is possible but, uh, by the patches. First is a special chip on the motherboard, and second is the driver program, after which the computer uh, can already execute programs for two 86. The operation system here is an MS-DOS uh, clone called AlphaDOS. In this operation system, for example, you can refer to drives with uh, classic uh, letters A, B, C, and also you can use the numbers 1, 2, 3, 2. As you can see, it, here is drive C is C is 3. Mm -hmm. like drives. Mm -hmm. Так. Basically, this system is a complete clone of MS-DOS. Uh, also, there is large critic support, but uh, not uh, in the ASC2 standard. So you need uh, special driver programs to switch code pages on the screen. Uh, could you go back to the circuit board? Yes, yes, I want to back later, but you uh -huh. This is a mistake in my... This is a special chip for 286 simulation and one uh, standard is a bus, another is not. Oh, pin out is another. RAM memory from uh, Western Germany. <laughs> Chips. Processor? East German. One, one power connector uh, with very uh, <laughs> big cables and uh, it's very hard to remove it from motherboard. <laughs> and handy little prototyping area on the bottom.
I will put this article uh, to my okay. my blog, and everybody can read this. One of one of the one of the sexiest eighty eighty six CPUs. Yes, yes. The S1842 has 1 megabyte of RAM, uh, 40 megabyte hard disk drive, MFM and uh, AGA compatible video adapter. The BIOS settings programs, uh, program is not built in and must be loaded from a disk. Another interesting computer, uh, what I have uh, is a computer based on the professional SM1800 uh, series. <laughs> In fact, the computer itself is not named here uh, because it was a uh, part of a full uh, wall uh, complex. It all was called the Quant uh, photo, uh, Phototype Setting Complex. Quant Complex was invented for the creation books and magazines for their preparation before printing. It was used in publishing and printing houses. Uh, here, uh, here you could to place photos, text in the different formats and with uh, different fonts. How it all uh, worked is unknown. Uh, there is a few, uh, there is a very, very little information about uh, this complex. I have never seen a full complex somewhere in the internet. Only several times I have seen a few electronic components from this computer available uh, for buy. In general. In general, the computer was built into a special uh, large table and I had to remove it uh, from there because I couldn't take the table with me. It was so big that I wouldn't fit it uh, into the car. Separate uh, two computers, some uh, remo uh, remote control and the power supply switch were present on the table. The system unit weighs a lot uh, and it's uh, very difficult to carry it alone. It weighs approximately 50 kilograms. There are two carrying uh, uh, handles on the top. <coughs> a block of these drives with uh, two uh, eight-inch uh, drives is connected to the computer. By the way, I have the original diskettes from this computer and I hope they are still in working condition. Uh, the heart of computer is a uh, 8080 processor. Unfortunately, I can't uh, say anything about uh, the RAM, but uh, it seems to be 256 kilobytes. Inside the computer, there is a board with a firmware with uh, tw uh, 24 chips of if uh, of uh, two kilobytes each. Oh, this is So the firmware size is 48 kilobytes. Of course, uh, if the complex works, uh, then it has specific software for text creation. But maybe the basis of all this is one of the standard operation systems. So it will be interesting to run it someday. Also, I have a lot of documentation from that complex, including the circuits and the spare boards. Just don't leave it in the sun for too long. <laughs> I didn't hear you. Just, just don't leave it in the sun for too long. Ah, no, no, sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's only for the photo. At the moment I have uh, almost everything, but briefly about museums. Unfortunately, uh, there are very few computer museums present in Ukraine. Until, until uh, recently, the only computer uh, exhibition was available uh, only in the Kiev, in the Museum of KPE, Kiev Polytechnics Institute. That's the third page, first link. Uh, the site has a contact section where you can find the address of the museum. In the museum, you will be able to see uh, Promi. Proving or Mir one computers from the 18, uh, from the 1960s. Unfortunately, as far as uh, as I know, the equipment there is not working. Another small computer museum is located in the Sumer city. Second link uh, at the Su uh, the Sumer State University. But with uh, the war, I don't know is it working at the moment or not. You can find the contacts. 
of the second unit. Uh, the first private computer museum was created by Metro Cherepano in the Mariupol city. I think you all know this museum from the news. Unfortunately, the museum was destroyed due to Russian attack. The owner was lucky to get out alive from the occupation city, uh, but he lost everything and now he works and tries to build a new life. Uh, his museum is last week. Uh, third thing, uh, the museum was opened in, uh, first in Kharkiv and uh, later received a representation in Kiev. This is a software and computer museum. Here you can also see many exhibitions of various compu uh, computing equipment. Now museum is working. It is also planned to open a computer museum in the new city, in the western part of Ukraine, in the near future, on the Lviv National University basis. Uh, but unfortunately the war uh, interrupted the plans for its official opening, although you can order a door now. So that's all. Do you have an idea how many people are collecting in Ukraine? Is it more like 10 or more like... I think near 100 people are interested in okay. old computer. Because mostly all of them are present in our Ukrainian computer chat. In okay. Telegram <laughs> program and we all know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, really, I uh, was prepared uh, a little uh, big uh, article. Uh, later, uh, I will uh, write it to my blog and uh, give a link on the forum, and you can read it <laughs> bigger. Could you provide the address of your blog? Uh, retro PC net. Uh, ret retro PC blogspot net. <laughs> I don't remember. Uh, really, I uh, I wrote uh, on blog uh, in very long time because after war started, uh, I have many other troubles except uh, old computers. Sure. I will yeah. put. Uh, I will give you a link on the forum. For for the home computers, um, do you have an idea how expensive they were to buy in, in compared to what somebody earned in one month of money? Was it more than one month worth of money? If you want if you want to buy one of those in, in 1985, uh, I don't know how to explain you. You want to know about old prices and new prices? No. Um, how easy was it to buy one? Well, did people have enough money to buy one or were they, were they expensive? Did they cost a lot of money? No, they were expensive. That's why people uh, made computers uh, at home okay. from uh, circuits, from uh, magazines. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> there are many ho uh, home computers are present. Uh, made it by themselves, mm -hmm. people. And, and for these self-made computers, was it easy to get to the parts? Uh, not all. Mm -hmm. Sometimes uh, the parts uh, was expensive too and mm -hmm. difficult to find. But the PCB of the homemade uh, computers are self-made or just you buy from the, just a plain PCB? And sold all together, or I mean, it's a lot of their company. Uh, no, no, uh, everybody uh, did it uh, by different ways. Uh, <coughs> cool. uh, no, any private companies in the Soviet Union, uh, all was uh, uh, state companies and big factories. Uh, only in the last years, some uh, cooperatives was created, and they. They made uh, the, the circuits and every and other and other things.
it all uh, was hard. <laughs> I've read something somewhere that uh, people working at the chip factory declared some of the chips faulty so they can take them home and build yes, their own yes. computers. Mm -hmm. yes. Chips and so not uh, any other parts. You know how in the Soviet uh, Union the software was distributed? Was it that you could buy it in stores or was it just uh, copied from owner to owner? Or, or what was their market for software in the Soviet Union, like for games <coughs> or applications? No, there were no any market. People just uh, copy games from each other or from uh, magazines, uh, or at least from magazines. Okay. Uh, you can, uh, you could uh, solve uh, something because then uh, you will be, uh, you will have some money, and this is not uh, good uh, when you must have official job and, mm -hmm. <laughs> and work in there. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why uh, any private uh, market uh, was not present. Mm -hmm. And there was not a state-run company who sold software to the people? Yes, yes. Or you, uh, you got uh, software with, uh, when you buy your computer. Okay. Really, I uh, don't know. As far as I, know. I think, I think no. <laughs> Only magazines. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I know in Poland in uh, 19, 19 years they had uh, some uh, TV program at evening uh, which translate uh, some audio signals yeah. uh, with games or something like that. And you can uh, turn your TV and uh, record, record to you uh, some new software, <laughs> some games from television signal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Yeah, thank you very much.